welcome to Premier Health Thursday Night Lights, presented by the Cincinnati Area Toyota Dealers. Tonight, from New Lebanon, the Western Ohio Athletic Conference takes center stage as the Dixie Greyhounds host the National Trail Blazers. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Matt Digby alongside the coach, Jim Place. We'll also hear shortly from Tage Joshi. But, Coach, we have a very intriguing matchup to keep an eye on tonight as the WOAC takes center stage. Matt, we've got a David versus Goliath situation tonight. At National Trail, Coach Matt Hoffman has got a powerful team. They're ranked third in the computer rank. Rankings. They've got 19 starters back. They're looking to make a deep playoff run. On the other side of the field, the Dixie Greyhounds, they've been outscored, Matt, 226-7 to seven so far this year. They've only got 15 players in uniform tonight. But wait a minute, Matt. You and I talked to all these Dixie Greyhounds yesterday, and they said, Coach Place, we're going to come out and we're going to play with everything we have. We love our coach. We're going to take pride in our school. I'm looking forward to see the effort that these Dixie Greyhounds put out tonight. And the Greyhounds may be winless right now, but remember, home teams are 4-0 so far far on Thursday Night Lights, including last week when Trotwood Madison got their first W against Alter. We'll see if Dixie can make it, keep that home team win streak going tonight. Now to the third member of our broadcast team, Tej Joshi. Good evening, Tej. Good evening, guys. It's a beautiful night for football. I am pumped for some Thursday Night Football. Now, as Coach alluded to, there's not that many players on this roster, so I am in the Dixie end zone right here where they are warming up and watching pregame warms with a team that's not fielding even 22 players has been pretty interesting. It's something to keep an eye on. There's a total number of players on the team, which we'll be doing all night. The coaches did have me keep an eye on their kicker, number 15. He's actually borrowed from the soccer team, and he's got deep range on field goals. Nothing to keep an eye on tonight. Like I said, it's a beautiful night for football, so we're going to get a full game forecast from Chief Meteorologist Natalie Walters. Hey everyone, going to be a beautiful evening for Thursday Night Lights, tracking lots of sunshine again. Overall picture perfect evening for some football as National Trail takes on Dixie. Going to be seeing temperatures in the upper 70s around 7 p.m. And then once the sun sets, we'll continue to see temperatures fall. Lower 70s around 8 p.m. Around 10 p.m. will be in the upper 60s. But really just a quiet day for our Thursday evening and going to be seeing lots of sunshine as well and comfortable humidity for the rest of the evening as well. Almost game time between the Blazers and Greyhounds. After the break, the coin toss and the opening kickoff. You're watching Premier Health Thursday Night Lights, presented by the Cincinnati Area Toyota Dealers. Silver dollar here, okay? What are you going to call? Heads. What's he going to call? Heads. Heads call. And there's a tail. Dixie, you want the toss. Kick, receive, defend the goal, defer to the second half. Receive. You want to receive, okay? And which way do you want to kick? I can kick this way. Right, go ahead and put your back over here. Dixie's won the toss, has elected to receive. All right, good luck, fellas. So that was Bob Giuliano conducting the coin toss. Dixie won the toss and will receive. They will be going from west to east, which is important because at least for the first quarter, maybe for part of the second, whoever's going west is going to be going, they're going to be staring right into the sun, Coach. Uh, that's a factor. You know, you, you, on the quarterback, receiver, it's a factor. You know, Matt, one thing you notice, this is a grass field. Look at how good that field is. The, the groundskeeper at Dixie might be the MVP. It is very well kept. As this kickoff oh. brought to you by Wright and Schulte, taking on one hop. This is going to be Aiden Martin, the freshman. Out to about the 15-yard line, and he will be stopped. And that is where the Dixie Greyhounds will begin their opening drive of this Week 5 contest. That, uh, Dixie's going to spread it out. They're, they're going to go uh, four wides and uh, try to spread it out. A whole lot of quick passes. The quarterback's going to catch and throw. Uh, they're really overmatched up front. The Dixie offensive line is 140, 175, 270, 175, and 155. They, they're really overmatched size-wise. So I look for a lot of quick passes. Quarterback catch and throw. One man in the backfield next to freshman quarterback Aiden Martin is Hunter Dalton. But Martin going to throw and over the head of intended receiver Jacob Bartram. That was all hitch. So all of them go seven yards, break it back to five. The quarterback pre-reads the softest coverage, and he's going to throw it that way. You know, one thing, he threw it to the wide receiver in trips. That's hard to get the ball all the way out to that uh, trips wide receiver. Spread him out again. So second and ten. Bartram moving a bit more inside. He was on the outside that last play as Martin waiting to receive the call. Trips out to the field. Only Dalton along with Martin in the backfield. And here's the pitch to Dalton. 
did well to get a couple of yards, and the pitch seems to be a little behind him, but he made a great adjustment to prevent a fumble. He is going to bring up a third down as we check out the starting lineup for the Dixie offense, brought to you by Premier Health. You got Aiden Martin, the quarterback, Roman Sarver, Billy Bowser, and Johnson, the receivers. And here's a look at the offensive line. Kreitzer, Ross, Butler, Butler, and Connor Kilbarger. So third down and about 10 from the 17-yard line. Empty, five wide receivers. And third and long, very little choice as here's Martin. And he loses the ball, scramble. A flag is down. And it is recovered by the Blazer defense. They will take over in the red zone. Let's see what the flag is. Hey, referee, a nice Bobby Giuliano. Ohio High School uh, Coaches uh, Officials Association Hall of Famer. There's the Hall of Famer. He's a signer. He signs the officials for a lot of games. What do you got, Bobby? The Hall of Famer. Oh, no flag, I guess. And no flag. It, spot. it was just a marker for the the fact that the ball had come loose. It was recovered by the Blazer defense. So they take over. This is Bergen Hoffman under center from the 10 yard line. First and goal. And now we have the first flag of the game. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense, number 59. Five-yard penalty, still first down. The Blazers are a classic wing T team. There's a playbook, there's a book called the Delaware Wing T Offense. Coach Hoffman at National Trail, they use everything a classic wing T. I mean, you cannot get more of a wing T team. Coach Hoffman says, hey, if it works, why change it? So we're, we're going to see the fullback trap, the belly, the scissors, the uh, waggle, the bootleg, classic wing T. There it is, sweep. Here's a pitch to Caden Clark, and he is in the end zone. Touchdown, <laughs> National Trail. Clark with a five-yard run on the touchdown brought to you by Donato's, and they are out to a 6-0 lead. And the one thing that uh, Dixie didn't need was poor field position on their first uh, defensive position uh, possession. So on will come Drew DeWitt to attempt the point after. Holder is the quarterback, Bergen Hoffman. Snap down, hold down, kick is up, and the kick is good. We are 59 seconds into the game. National Trail out to a 7-0 lead against Dixie. This is Premier Health Thursday Night Lights, presented by your Cincinnati area Toyota dealers. Welcome back to New Lebanon National Trail with a 7-0 lead 59 seconds into the contest after the defense forcing a fumble and recovering that fumble at the 10 on third down. And they were able to get a little bit closer because of an encroachment penalty and a five-yard run by Caden Clark as we get set for this kickoff brought to you by Wright and Schulte. Hunter Dalton and Zach Wright are back deep for the Dixie Greyhounds as they hope for... A more positive outcome on the second drive. Kick is in the air. And taken in the air by Zach Wright. Out to the 20. Almost got by one man and will be stopped just short of the 30-yard line. So a very positive return. It's always interesting. We saw the opening kickoff. Dixie opted to take it on one bounce. This time Wright took it on the... Uh, on the way. These are the National Trail defensive starters brought to you by Premier Health. You got Strasser, Bird, Simpson, and Lewis on the defensive line. DeWitt, Wells, and Heck are the linebackers in the secondary. You got Roberts, Browning, Watts, and Chase Rubush. So Aiden Martin out for his second drive of the evening. Ball is at the 28-yard line, and Martin with a keeper up the middle and looked to have a small hole enough for maybe two yards. So it will bring up second and eight. A tackle on the play by number four, Drew DeWitt, 6'4", 210 junior. He's also the fullback on offense. Listen to this. He gained 30 pounds from last year. Coach said he just lived in the weight room. Drew DeWitt, keep, keep an eye on him. Junior, going to be a big name next year, 6'4", 210. He was also the uh, kicker on the uh, kicker, point after attack. Kicker, fullback, middle linebacker. He's only a junior. Here comes some heat. 
Now Martin Ooh, with call. a screen pass. Got out to Dalton, broke one tackle, and is able to get a couple extra yards because he was on top of a defender at first. So that will make it a third and about five from the 33-yard line. As we take a look at this replay, nice screen pass. Dalton able to break one tackle. And again, the stop ultimately made by Brody Strasser. But Dalton able to get a couple extra yards on that play. Third down. This time, the runner met in the backfield. That was Dalton again. And this time, the Blazer defense was not fooled. The coach was trying to run a little clock there, trying to see if he can establish a little bit of a run game. Uh, just such a physical mismatch up front. Although Spencer Butler, 6'4", 270, uh, a sophomore uh, at center, he's going to be a good one. So Chaz Miller will come out to punt. This drive going three plays and two yards. You got two Blazers lined up to receive in Jamison Watts and Chase Rubush. Miller opts for a rugby style kick. He may or may not have thought for a split second about taking it, but this is going to be taken by Watts. Broken one tackle inside the 50 and down to about the 44 yard line. So another short field coming up for the National Trail offense as they get ready for their second drive. And the first touchdown was scored by Caden Clark. Listen to this. He's a three sport man, but listen to what his three sports are football, golf, and baseball. So every Saturday after the football game, he goes and plays on the varsity golf team. He said, Coach Plays, my summer was crazy. Every morning I went and lifted weights for football. I then went out and played around the golf, and then in the evening I played baseball. Caden Clark, he's a speedster. He, he can get going. They're going to get him the ball. Let's see if they come back with that sweeper. They're going to pound the big fullback up the middle. He did score the opening touchdown of the Jet. game, as here is Hoffman. Handoff up the middle. One broken tackle, and close to a first down is DeWitt. <laughs> So here are the offensive starters brought to you by Premier Health. Hoffman under center. DeWitt, you just saw with the carry up the middle. Clark has the touchdown so far, the lone touchdown so far. Rubush also in the backfield. And here is a look at the line. Roberts, Thompson, Lee, Baker, Bottoms, and Gage Lesh is the tight end. Hey, you mentioned Bergen Hoffman. He's the quarterback, six foot, 205 senior. I mean, the quarterbacks and running backs are bigger than the defensive linemen for Dixie. So it's going to be a, a rough to stop them. So here's Hoffman, the fullback and off to DeWitt. He patiently waited for the opening on the left side, and he is down the sideline. No flags, touchdown, national trail. So Caden Clark on the opening drive, and on the second drive, it is Drew DeWitt on the touchdown brought to you by Donato's, and you saw great sportsmanship on the part of Dixie. That was a DeWitt waited, asking you shall receive. Yep. Fullback for ISO. Classic uh, wing T play. Woody Hayes loved it. Give that ball to the fullback off the off the six hole, off the seven hole. Just classic wing T football. Run the ball. Yep. So coming up on four minutes into this contest, National Trail about to kick the extra point. That if good will put them up 14 to nothing. Very strong opening two drives for Mark Hoffman's team. The Wits kick is up. It is good. It is 14-0 National Trail. So we're going to take a quick break. You're watching Premier Health Thursday Night Lights presented by your Cincinnati area Toyota dealers. 14-0 National Trail. Eight twenty-three to go in the first quarter of this Week Five Thursday Night Lights contest between National Trail and Dixie. The Blazers leading fourteen nothing on touchdown runs from Caden Clark and Drew Dewitt. Very simple, very efficient drives on the part of the Blazers' offense, Coach. Oh yeah, National Trail fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. You know, you're talking about a veteran over there, and Coach Mark Hoffman. He, he's been around. Uh, he's been around coaching for over forty years. What a background he has. We'll talk about more of his background, but he's a fundamental guy. This kickoff from Drew DeWitt brought to you by Wright and Schulte. Two men back for the Greyhounds. It's taken in the air by number 20, Zach Wright. And he's gotten a hole, almost had a hole, close to near the 35-yard line. So Dixie, their third drive. They had good starting field position for their second drive, and they have good field position coming up right now. Now let's see if they can do anything with it. You know, Hunter Dalton is their tailback, and he's a three-year starter. They're going to try and get him the ball on the outside a little bit. Haven't had much success with it. You know, the neat thing about Hunter is, he says, Coach Place, I am going to be a United States Marine. My cousin's a Marine. He says, I feel like I owe it to my country. Good young man there. I'm rooting for him. Number 10, Hunter Dalton. Proud of you, Hunter. 
Always admirable uh, oh. when student athletes choose to go into the service Switch after the high school. Line. Look at speed option into the field. This oh. is Martin from the shotgun. Throwing left it is complete to number 85. And that's going to be a gain of roughly seven. Good quick slant play. Get the ball, throw the ball. Not going to have a lot of time. You know, Tate Kreitzer, number 71, he's playing right offensive tackle. He was a wide receiver last week. He's a 5'8", 140-pound junior. They ran out of linemen. So second down and three. Breaking, quick pass. Looking left again. Ooh. And he tried to get the ball to Hunter Dalton, but he must have lost his footing. Yeah. Catch and throw it fast. Andy Bowser was the man who caught that pass on the first down. You know, Coach Wolf's not going to make excuses for his Dixie Greyhounds. He's got nine players hurt, though. You know, when you got a roster of 25 and nine of them get hurt, you know, they're standing on the sidelines. You see more players on the sidelines out of uniform to uniform. That makes it tough. you got to move people around. All of a sudden, you got a wide receiver playing offensive tackle because they're out of linemen. Of those nine, six were linemen. Third down and three. One man in the backfield is Martin rolling to his right. He fires low, and it is incomplete. Tried to thread the needle to number 14, Jamariel Jordan, I believe that was the intended receiver. Here's a look at the replay. Had, good, had a good block there. It was 24, the intended receiver there. Roman Sarver. So on to punt for the second time today is Chaz Murray. Chaz Miller, pardon me. As Whoa. this ball takes a couple hops, a little bobble at the start, but eventually controlled by National Trail. And they will take over just past their own 30-yard line. 7.23 to go in the first quarter. Here's a look at the Dixie starting defense brought to you by Premier Health. Take Kreitzer, Wes Ross, Butler. It's a three-man defensive front. Bartram, Dalton, Butler, Kilbarger are the linebackers. And starting secondary, Sarver, Johnson, Martin, and Wright. A lot of two-way players for this Dixie Greyhound team in 2022. Classic wing tee. So here's the handoff. One broken tackle. Ball came loose. And fortunately for the Blazers, an offensive lineman was right on top of it. That was number 66, Parker Butler, or correction. One thing about the wing tee, they, they pull a lot of guards. The guards are always pulling, trapping, leading. If you if your linebacker's key to guards in this offense, you're pretty much going to go to the ball. That play, they, they ran the fullback, faked from one side, and they come back to the halfback the other side. But both guards pulled to the play side. You want your linebackers reading guards against the wing tee. There's the jet motion. So a gain of seven on that play. Here's DeWitt up the middle. One broken tackle, several broken tackles, and he is off to the races. 20. 10 touchdown national trail second of the night for the fullback drew dewitt that touchdown brought to you by donato's six foot four he's a big one got good speed you see him pull away in the open field there there was contact at the line of scrimmage a couple yards after there was a little bit of contact but then once he got into the secondary he was able to pull away from the defenders So two touchdown runs for DeWitt, in addition to the one for Clark that occurred in the opening minute of the game, and Trail will have an extra point attempt to go up three scores, 21 to nothing. This is DeWitt, who just scored the touchdown. Hoffman, the quarterback, holds, and the kick is good. So 6.34 to go in the first quarter. National Trail with a 21 to nothing lead against Dixie. Blazers out to a great start as here's another look at that touchdown run. One broken tackle. You had one Greyhound defender with an angle but couldn't quite make contact. And then it was nothing but open field for Drew DeWitt. Matt, you know, I think we're heading to a situation, and you know, anybody knows they football. This is not going to be a close game. You know, it's a mismatched team here. So here's the rule in Ohio high school football. And in the second half, if you're up 30 points or more, you go to running clock. Now, that doesn't apply to the first half, but here's the exception. If 
both coaches mutually agree in the first half to go to running clock, you can do it. So let's just see whether we get to that situation or not. I think we're off to a pretty good start to where a decision has to be made here. Are we going to go to running clock in the first half? What's in the best interest of the kids? Both coaches are class acts. They'll do what's in the best interest of the kids. I, I predict that. This kickoff brought to you by Wright and Schulte as DeWitt has it teed up. Two men back for the Greyhounds. And it skidded and stopped right at about the 12-yard line. Picked up by Zach Wright. He got to about the 20 before being stopped. So that is where Dixie will take over for their fourth drive. Oh, don't get another guy hurt. Do not get another guy injured. That is one thing head coach Eric Wolf mentioned. Injuries have been a problem going back to week one. They have a couple guys that Coach Wolf is confident will be back next week, for instance, but you want everyone as healthy as possible. Coach Wolf, first year head coach, uh, came, came over from uh, uh, and, and so in Arcanum, uh, played at Arcanum, played college football, but bluffed a good tight end in college. Young guy, young good coach, he's going to be fine. So here's Aiden Martin, the freshman quarterback. He had a nice two yard run where he was able to work to get those yards back on the second drive of the game he is alone in the backfield now after the running back switched out and he's going to be stopped for a short loss by the blazer defense the blazer defense has been key when they needed to be so far in this opening part of the first quarter there's a close-up of brody strasser Five nine senior for the Blazers, playing on the right side of the line here as Martin again QB keeper, able to get past one defender and a short gain, but it will mean third and long from around the twenty. Defensive coordinator for National Trail Frank Carr. Any of your Earlham College fans out there? That's the same Frank Carr. He was head coach at Earlham College for eighteen years. Boy, he is a veteran, great coach. Yeah, I talked to him before the game. He said, Coach, I was an administrator. I was a coach. He said, I had to get back to coaching football, though. That's what I love the most. He said, uh, you know, they kicked me upstairs after I coached for 18 years as head coach at Earlham. I was athletic director, all kind of fundraising. I'm a football coach. Coach Frank Carr, defensive coordinator, National Trail. Here's the third down play. Martin's pass incomplete. A little bit off target for his intended receiver, and that will bring up fourth down and 11 there is a stop to play for an injury that Bob Giuliano with the call there and looks like a looks like a blazer defender join us on Dayton on Facebook if you have any pictures of tonight's game or want to join in on the discussion online follow us on Facebook at Dayton 24 7 now and use the hashtag Thursday night lights You see first-year head coach Eric Wolf issuing instructions as they are still attending to the injured defender. It looks like Brody Strasser. Hopefully he is able to get up and at least make his way to the sideline under his own power. When you see the head coach out there of, uh, of the Blazers, Coach Huffman, what a class act. He has been around. He he, he was went to National Trail, graduated in the second graduating class way back in 1969. He loves National Trail. There he is. And you know what? Look at him, shirt and tie, class all the way. Assistant a lot of big programs. Sydney, uh, Lima Sr., went down to Florida as an assistant coach. This is the second time as a stint as a, as a coach, the head coach of the National Trail. I got a story I want to tell later about how he took the job the second time around. Absolutely. In the meantime, we have good news to report. Brendan Simpson was the injured blader. He was able to get up and kind of jog off to the field under oh his boy. own power oh as oh a bobbled snap on fourth down. It's all Miller can do to keep National Trail from picking up the ball and running into the end zone on that play alone. But they will take over again inside the 10-yard line. In the meantime, we'll send it down to the sideline. Tate Joshi. Hey guys, the sideline is a buzzing with the youth here from Dixie. We got a bunch of the youth football players here. We got a bunch of just really happy kids. They don't care about the scoreboard. They're having a good time. 
They are having a great energy here. If you don't see them on the side, they are all playing, throwing the football around, and having a great time. Come on, everybody, make some noise for the camera. Yeah, here, say something to everybody at home right now about how it means to be a Dixie fan. Oh, my gosh, it means so much to me to be a Dixie fan. I just love Dixie so much, and I love all of these, and they're all my family, and I love you guys. Yeah. We're going to send it back up the broadcast, but I'll hang out with these kids, and we're going to have some more fun down here. Yeah. Thank you, Tage. That was Chase Rubush with the touchdown, running up the left side, brought to you by Donato. So four drives, four touchdowns for National Trail, all on runs. One from Caden Clark, two from Drew DeWitt, and now one from Chase Rubush, number 29. I, I think this was to be expected. All you had to do is look at the size, the lineups, the 19 starters back for, for National Trail, and the injuries to Dixie, you know, the Dixie young men. You go to a game like this and there's a tendency to say, oh my gosh, that's a terrible game. And these Dixie players, they practice just as hard as anybody else, maybe more dedicated to come back each and every week and, and keep fighting despite the situation. You know, I respect the Dixie Greyhounds. Coach Wolf, they, they love their coach. They love their coach, I'm telling you that. They do have a lot of Our, faith in the first year head coach, Eric Wolf. They were optimistic. Coach was optimistic. He was realistic about, you know, it hasn't been easy, the results at times, but... It's a, it's a learning and growing process here in New Lebanon. There is reason to look ahead and be hopeful about the future. So 28 nothing is your score. 4.55 to go in the first quarter. Now let me talk about situations like this. As an early, as a young coach, and remember I was a head coach for 47 years. When I used to get a, a, a bad beating, I was furious. I, a lot of times I got mad at the other coaches. I, I couldn't th think all week. And then all of a sudden, a veteran coach named Kenny Amlin said something to me. He says, Coach Place, I want to tell you something about getting beat bad. Number one, you may have overscheduled your team, so it's your fault. Number two, you may have done a good enough coaching job, so get better at coaching your team. And number three, don't get mad, get even. Well, you know what, man? I can think of four or five times in my career where I took a beating, and you know what was nice? All four or five of those times I came back, and I was able to get even at one time or another. And, and it just makes it that much sweeter. So, so Drew yeah. DeWitt will have this kickoff here for the Blazers, brought to you by Wright and Schulte. Sun has gone down enough that the Blazers, they are looking to the west, but they are not staring directly into the sunlight. Not the case at the opening kickoff, as this is taken on, on a couple of hops. And got sandwiched in between a couple of tacklers, but out to around the 23-yard line. That is where Dixie will take over with 4.48 to go in the first quarter. He asked the Dixie players, what do you think of Coach Wolf? They say energy, passion, role model. He's going to turn it around. He's going to have a successful career. Uh, someday he'll be standing over the sideline like Coach Hoff and be a veteran. But right now, it's going to be tough, Coach Wolf. Hang in there. Go home, see wife Chrissy, son Skyler, daughter Emma. They're going to love you, Coach. Keep fighting. Come back next week. Get some kids healthy. And that was the mantra that they were saying, the players as well, as Martin airs one downfield and... There were multiple receivers for the Greyhounds in pursuit. Sarver among them. Also in position was the running back, Hunter Dalton, out of the backfield. He had a chance at making the catch. Now they went five five wide in the streak pattern. Just trying to get guy, the man open. Catch and throw by the quarterback. You know he doesn't have much time. Going empty again. Second and ten now Maybe from the 24. Draw, yeah, there's not much room in that middle. Catch and throw. Here's a nice in slant. Pass is complete. Good for roughly five, six yards. That was Sarver on the reception. Let me explain what happens in what's called empty formation. You put three receivers to one side, and, and that's where you run your pattern. So you have a pattern called there. But if you see a blitz coming to the other side, you either have what's called a rocket or a bubble. That time it was a rocket. So again, uh, the quarterback saw the blitz, got away from the pattern to the trip side, and went to the bubble rocket side. After this play, I'll explain the difference between a bubble and a rocket. So here's Martin, again alone in the backfield, Empty looking backfield. to his right. Pass is complete, and no, it is not. It is broken up. Bartram was the intended receiver, but number 60 for the National Trail defense. That was Jordan Heck on the pass breakup, and that will bring up fourth down. Again, catch and throw. So what's the difference between a bubble and a rocket? On a bubble, you throw to the inside receiver going out, and quite obviously outside box in. On a rocket, you throw to the outside receiver coming in, and then quite obviously the other receivers block out. 
rocket and bubble, catch, throw. It's great against blitzing because you get in the ball to a receiver with blockers in a very quick manner. Now look at this. They will Definitely go for again. it on fourth down. It's Martin again alone in the backfield being chased by multiple defenders, and he will be stopped for a sack by number 60. On the spot again is Jordan Heck. He had the pass break up the previous play, and he has the sack to again give National Trail a short field to work with. Hey, how about quarterback Bergen Hoffman coming in for the, the, the Blazers? His father is the offensive coordinator, Eric Hoffman. His grandfather, Matt Hoffman, is the head coach. I said to him, I said, Bergen, is that a, Bergen, is that a lot of uh, pressure on you? He said, Coach, I just love it. He says, because one thing, when I cross the white line and go on the football field, they're not dad, they're not grandfather, they are coach. And as simple as that, and uh, that that makes it simple. He says, we've got a great tradition here. My dad went to National Trail. My granddad, the head coach, went to National Trail. He loves being a Blazer. Big quarterback, 205 senior. So Hoffman lines up right under center, a quick handoff to number 10. He gets a block inside the 10, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, National Trail. That is Jamison Watts, his first score of the night. The touchdown brought to you by Donato's. And it is now 34 to nothing in favor of the Blazers. Matt, you know one thing that helped me as I, you know, I was a head coach for 47 years, Matt, and somewhere along there I developed a philosophy about lopsided games. And let me tell you what my philosophy was, and we're approaching one of those philosophies. My philosophy was at any time from the third quarter or sooner, and we got up 35 points, we went to a limited substitution. And what I meant by limited, and let's see the extra point. Okay, what I mean by limited, Matt, is this. We would keep in the starting offensive line and go with the young backs to give them a chance. Then if we scored one more time, we went totally substitutions at that at 42. Now, if we got into the, fo- the fourth quarter and we had a 28-point lead, we went to limited substitution to 28. If we got into under five minutes and we had a 21-point lead, we went to limited substitutions there. And then one more touchdown, of course, we progressed to full uh, um, substitutions. So what helped me was out of philosophy. I never had to go into a game thinking, what am I going to do? And what is this, that, and the other thing? I had a philosophy. Now, there's Coach Matt Hoffman. He's got a philosophy. He, he, he knows what he's going to do. He's up 35, first half. I mean, it's pretty obvious. we got a mismatch here. He, he's, he's a class act, Coach Hoffman. You know, let me tell you a story about Coach Hoffman. So he's coaching at Earlham College, has the, the, uh, the, um, the, the massive heart attack. He had a stroke, had heart surgery, open heart surgery. So that's in January. Decides I can't coach at Earlham College anymore. I'll finish the story after this kickoff. Uh, this upcoming kickoff brought to you by Wright and Schulte. Drew DeWitt is in position. And two men back for Dixie is Sarver and Zach Wright. DeWitt with a fairly low kick taken in the air by Wright. Out past the 20, and he will be stopped near the 22-yard line. So Dixie trying to get some offense momentum going. Let's go down to the sideline, Tej Joshi. Hey, guys, I want to bring you some details on something Coach was mentioning. They got to keep a positive attitude when the score looks like this. So for Dixie, certainly not a positive look on the scoreboard, but I've seen the coaches finding little winning moments instructing their players on how to keep a positive attitude. Back to you guys in the broadcast booth. Thank you, Tej. They did have, not that long ago, a third and short opportunity the Dixie offense did. They just were not able to capitalize, but they did have... It's not that they have not had opportunities. Just such a size mismatch. Martin. And, and experience. 19 starters back for National Trail. Third in the computer standings. Martin is joined There's in the backfield nice by Dalton, who takes the handoff, and that's a positive game for about six, seven yards up the middle. There is a penalty flag on the play. We haven't seen too many of those so far today, but one indication it could be against the trail defense. Here's referee Bob Giuliano. Face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty will result in the first down. And that is the first first down of the ball game for the Dixie offense. It comes with just about three and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. You got two different kind of face masks. You got grabbing the face mask, which is 15, and then you just got touching the face mask, which is five. Intentional versus unintentional, or uh, pulling on it, as simple as that. First down brought to you by Arby's as a quick pass. Martin had to get rid of it quickly because there was a defender putting him under pressure. 
He got it away without any further damage done. Second down coming up for the Greyhounds. Matt, that's called an RPO, run pass option. Probably the most popular play in all football right now. Yes, it is. What they do is they pull the backside guard and lead him up into the hole, and he's going to isolate on the linebacker. If the linebacker steps up, the quarterback's going to pull the ball, and then he has a receiver replace the linebacker, and he throws it there. If the linebacker sits back, he gives it a running back. He reads the front side linebacker on an RPO, run pass option. And here is Martin on play. the QB keeper. He do all he can, I think, to get back to the line of scrimmage or may have lost a yard. Either way, it will be third and long coming up for the Greyhounds. Matt, let me finish the story about Coach Hoffman. So he has has open heart, the Widowmaker, open heart surgery. He's coaching at Earlham College, says he's done. Okay, I I can't coach anymore. Uh, Wait, I I don't know if I'm going to finish the story. I I, want to get to this story because he is a character. Dixie looking to go a little bit more up-tempo as they look for some positive offensive momentum. Martin will pitch out. This is Dalton, and he was met not one second after receiving the pitch, and that will bring up a fourth and long. Let's try and finish the story. So it's May. He's had the Widowmaker surgery. You know, Kim, his wife, is thrilled that he's doing fine. He's teaching. Coach Hoffman's a full-time teacher. teaches social studies at the school. He looks at the back of the classroom. The head coach from National Trail quit. He's standing there with a young man, and Coach Hoffman says, well, is this the new head coach? I'm glad they came to introduce me to the new head coach. Superintendent says, no, 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 Hoff. This is your substitute for the day. I'm ah. taking you over to the board of office, and we got to have a little talk about something, Hoff. Oh. We're going to finish the story after this play. I'll tell you, this is Matt Hoff, and he's class so over. the superintendent's going that uh, aspect. Uh, yeah, he went over there. This is Chaz Miller rolling out. Oh, no, he wants to fake it, and oh, his pass is intercepted by National Trail. So the Blazers, not fooled by the fake punt attempt on the part of Dixie. Miller's pass over the middle was intercepted. That was number five, Evan Baker with the pick. And again, another short field coming up for the Blazer offense. I thought I was there. But anyway, let's finish the story. So Coach Hoffman and the superintendent go to the board office. Matt's wife, Kim, works at the board office. She sees the superintendent walking in. She says, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Matt says those just before he got in the superintendent's office, he turned around. Kim gave him a thumbs up. He says, okay, my community needs me. This is his eighth year back. Glad the superintendent talked him into taking over head coach again. As Hoffman hands off on the first play, the drive to Caden Clark. One broken tackle, and he is in the end zone. Touchdown, National Trail. Caden Clark, his second score of the night. That touchdown brought to you by Donato's from 27 yards out. Clark's the speedster. They do have that balance. Clark the speedster, DeWitt the power, and Clark and DeWitt both had two touchdowns each in addition to Rubush and Watts. Let's run that basic wing T offense. Pull back one way, tail back the other way. Pull both guards. Power football. So 135 to go in the first quarter. Very effective, very efficient drive so far for the National Trail offense. Dixie, as you were alluding to, Coach, it's the small victories in the process of learning and growing. Point after attempt is good, and it is now 42 0 with a minute 35 to play in the first quarter. We had a chance to. There's the counter. Both guards pull. We both had a chance to speak with Kate and Clark yesterday, previewing this game, and Clark was very professional when I spoke with him. He said it was a business trip approach that the Blazers were taking, and they have certainly acted in that fashion this first quarter. Yeah. You know something interesting. The right tackle, Sean Roberts, the big six foot, two hundred fifty pound senior, benches three fifteen, four year starter. They're running right behind big Sean Roberts, seventy nine. When I said to him, give me one word to describe Coach Hoffman, I've never heard a player use this word before. He says he's a necessity. I a said, necessity. what? The, the head coach, he says, we could not be here without him. He's a necessity. What a word to describe the head coach. And what a compliment. To, they call him Hoff. Coach Hoffman, they call him Hoff. He's affectionately called Hoff by everybody up there in the New Paris community. This kickoff brought to you by Wright and Schulte. It will be DeWitt lining up. Two men back to receive in right and Sarver standing each at about the five-yard line. Beautiful night for football here in New Lebanon. We have been spoiled with outstanding weather for these Thursday Night Lights contests so far in 2022. Oh, I see that grass field and they play football and soccer on it, and it looks beautiful. 
But wait a minute, we haven't had that Ohio fall Friday night thunderstorm rain delay game that tears every grass field up. It's been a minute since I've seen one of those, oh, and oh, here boy. another we do not want to see. There's no, Sarver no, on the return. No, no, no. You know, Matt, do you ever think there's a point in this game where maybe they go, you know, why are we still playing? You know, we've got three more quarters, 42-0. Coach Hoffman, you know, he's going to do the right thing. I, I predict this. Coach Hoffman's going to do the right thing. I don't know what the right thing is. He's going to do the right thing, though. He, he's been around a long time. We've seen that highs, lows. Good guy. Well, we did see, I believe it was Zach Wright. He was walking off a little gingerly at some point in time earlier in this quarter. He has been able to return to the game, thankfully. And you see Sarver right now. He is slowly... Uh, not super oh. slowly, but he is walking off the field under his own power. Yeah, these two Dixie Greyhounds are taking a physical beating. You know, yeah. this Coach Wolf, he, he, you know, community, Thursday Night Lights, the league. This, there he is. He's got one responsibility. This play, his players love him. I mean, you talk to the they players do. and they just said, no, no. Coach Wolf, he's our guy. We love him. We're going to stick with him. A very positive. And Coach, uh, Tate hit it right in the nose. Every one of those players said, we're coming right from their head coach, we're just going to try and get better every week. Go look for little victories. Try to do things right. Hang in there, coach. You got a long career, young guy. He's going to have a lot of ups and downs. And he does have a lot of guys that we were able to speak with yesterday, for instance, that are coming back. Hunter yep. Dalton is only a junior. Aiden Martin, oh, the quarterback, yeah. is only a freshman. Oh, so yeah. they have multiple years. They'll be back. The, the first year may always be the hardest, but it is only the first year. There are many more to come. Here's Martin from the shotgun. Dalton next to him in the backfield. As Martin buying some time, throws downfield. Almost Ooh. a spectacular catch had it been made by Cole Johnson. But it is just out of reach. He did well to get a hand to it. Trying one of those Odell uh, uh, Beckham chances. Jamar Chase catches. Yeah, this scoring summary brought to you by Rand Associates. The most recent touchdown, Caden Clark, the 27-yard rush. That was his second score of the night. He scored in the first minute of the contest. And he has also scored now to make it 42 to 0. One twenty to play in the first quarter. This is Dalton. Did well to get it past one tackle and pick up a couple yards on this play. So it will be third and it's like seven, I want to say, maybe six. So this is not the first time Dixie has gotten themselves into this position. Third and manageable, not super long. They do have one first down on the night. Three receivers on the right for Martin, who's going to keep it himself. Got well, almost got past one defender, but... A critical contact made to stop Martin about the 30-yard line. Otherwise, he would have had probably enough to pick up the first down. Freshman, he's going to be good. Coach Wolf says fourth and two. This is as good a chance as I got as any. They've gone for it. They got. They went for it traditionally and were not able to convert it. They Not that long ago, they also tried a fake punt. That pass was intercepted. They're going to let the quarter run out. So a very effective opening quarter for the National Trail Blazers as they take a 42-0 lead into the second quarter. You're watching Premier Health Thursday Night Lights presented by the Cincinnati area Toyota dealers. Welcome back to Premier Health Thursday Night Lights. We are in New Lebanon, National Trail, leading 42-0 against Dixie as we get ready to start the second quarter. Dixie going for it on fourth and two. They are 0 for 2 in the first quarter on fourth down, but this is Aiden Martin on the QB keeper. Almost looked to get rid of, past one defender, but was not able to do so. He will be stopped for a short loss, and that is a turnover on downs. Coach Wolf says, we're going to try and get little victories. You know, a first down there would have been something they could have gone to films on uh, tomorrow and uh, said, uh, you know, look at the little victories. You know, Matt, when I was a coach, I loved Thursday night games, and here's why. We watched films on Friday, and then I gave my players off on Saturday. I'd Dixie has called a timeout, their first of the half. 
But the reason I did that, I had a lot of teams where my players had hopes of playing college football. And I said, listen, we have two Thursday night games. On those weekends, go watch college football games. And then that way they didn't have to miss it. On the regular games, we had game on Friday and films on Saturday. It made it tough for them to go see college. You know, I always excused them, but, you know, they didn't want to miss films. So I loved having Thursday night games. And uh, I wish more coaches would take that Thursday night game and give, you know, and everything is gave me time with my family. You know, I had young children there in those years, and I could go to their soccer games or whatever, my youth football game for my son and whatever the case is. So love those Thursday night game uh, the one question i definitely make sure to ask players and coaches yes it is exciting to play on thursday nights but at the same time you recognize you have one less day to get ready for your opponent how did you uh, manage to uh, address that gap and you know, we, that we just moved days? everything up a week you know uh, monday became tuesday so we hit on monday hit on wednesday pregame on wednesday and then we went to the game it was not a big deal as simple as that we had a scouting report early one day and uh, everything was easy there's coach wolf hang in there coach you're gonna be okay Good young coach, played football at Bluffton College, tight end. Hey, how about this officials crew? Bob Giuliano, he assigns all the other officials. He's considered one time. They call him the Hall of Famer. Usually he has one or two young officials with him that he trains and breaks in. Tonight he's got a veteran crew, though. They're all veterans. What's he doing? He's going over talking to Kendall Lash. She sees the red hat. When Kendall walks on the field, the play stops. I wonder if he's expecting a timeout here. What are you asking for, Bobby? Kendall, you know, for those of you not familiar, they have someone called a red hat. When the red hat's on the field, you don't play because it's a TV timeout. When the red hat, st- red hat stops off, and Kendall Lash, she does a good job. She's a football mom. Oh, she knows football. She Kendall, oh, yeah. A.J., offensive coordinator out at Wayne. As National Trail was getting set, but a flag on the play, early movement from the line. What do you got, Hall of Famer? Ball, encroachment on the defense, five-yard penalty. We play first down. So it will be a first and five. I saw movement on the line somewhere. Didn't see specifically from who. Left guard. Hey, uh, but tonight he's got an all-veteran crew. Brian Sambrowski, Jerry Webb, Brandon Kidwell, and Vinny Carosa. These are top officials. Usually I expect the Hall of Famer to bring like two or three young officials because he trains them. That, that's one of the things he's famous for is taking young officials and training them. But tonight the Hall of Famer, this is a veteran crew. These, these guys are tired. They had LaSalle Fairmont two weeks ago. They have all the top games. So this is Hoffman just outside the 20 under center. Yep, it's a Wayne handoff sweep. to number 24. That's Jody Wintrow. And he gets to about the 15-yard line, so it will set up. It is good enough for a first down. The only thing about the wing tee, the quarterback turns his back to the line of scrimmage, so you don't have anywhere where an idea where that ball's going. Is it going to the fullback? Is it going to, to the backside halfback on a counter? Is it going to the wingman on a scissors? Is it going and they run a play called Waggle, where the fullback sneaks out into the flat. The quarterback turns his back, though. If you're reading quarterback in this offense, you are going to get lost. You have got to guard read. Now, the problem was when I was a head yep. coach, we always back read. But when we go to a wing T team, you had one week to get ready to guard read. On first down from the Donato's Chip delivery counter. zone, a handoff to Wintrow again, and he finds a hole up the middle. Touchdown, National Trail. On the first down, after getting the first down, brought to you by Osseo Home Improvement and entering the Donato's delivery zone, one play, and National Trail has a touchdown brought to you by Donato's. That was a carry for number 24, Jody Wintrow, the freshman. So that will make it 48 to nothing. National Trail extra point pending. As Hoffman ready to hold, Drew DeWitt lining up. He has a couple of touchdown runs himself. All touchdown runs so far tonight for the Blazers. Snap down, hold down, kick is up, and kick is good. So 49 nothing, 10-19 to go in the second quarter. You're watching Premier Health Thursday Night Lights, presented by the Cincinnati area Toyota dealers. Welcome back to Thursday Night Lights. 49 nothing, National Trail, a very effective Week Five for the Blazers, both on offense and on defense. Glad you could join us on. Dayton 24-7 now, Matt Digby, Jim Poise, Tej Joshi, and our outstanding crew. We are ready for the upcoming kickoff, which will be brought to you by Wright and Schulte, as Drew DeWitt is no longer staring into the sun. He is now looking to his east, looking to the east. 
From our camera angle, you are looking south. Again, the kickoff brought to you by Wright and Schulte. And a little bit of a bobble. Picked up, though, by Zach Wright. And the good news there, Roman Sarver, he was a little shaken up on the previous kickoff. He is back out on the field. Matt, I'm going to give you a prediction. Ten minutes to go, second quarter, 49 nothing. I'm going to predict the final score, 56 nothing. And you know, I mean, one more touchdown and over three quarters and, uh, and two, three quarters of football? You know why? Because I know Coach Matt Hoffman. He's a, he's a great guy. He's not going to let this game get terrible. You know, what are you going to do? I mean, he's got a veteran team. He's going against a mismatch team. Coach Jim Place predicts 56 now based upon the character of Coach Huffman. Now, this scoring running. summary, by the way, brought to you by Rand Associates. Jody Wintrow had the 15-yard rush for the touchdown on the most recent Blazer drive as back out on the field is the Greyhound offense. Martin with a handoff. Looks like Hunter Dalton, and that's good for about a couple yards, so we'll bring up second and short. Two things going on, Matt. we got a running clock. Yes. Now, that has to be mutual agreement. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. I mean, that's fairly obvious, but not always. Not always. Second thing is, coach has got his second team in. Got number twos in. Coach Hoffman, he's going to find a way to keep this from just being a, a total, you know, it's a mismatch, but, you know, a mismatch doesn't have to be a total embarrassment. Dixie coming off a tough loss last week at Tri-County North. It was a similar situation there. As Tri-County North got, I believe that was their first win of the season last week. Dalton the handoff again. Broke one tackle, and he, I think, maybe got one yard on that play. Hey, you know, there's a whole lot of freshmen and sophomore mom and dad sitting over in the national trail side saying, hey, that's my son out there. He's playing varsity football in the second quarter. So, you know, these guys are getting valuable playing time. Uh, national trail, real strong junior class, real strong senior class. Numbers are down a little bit in freshman, sophomore class, then a strong seventh, eighth grade class. So these young guys are going to have to be players here in a couple of years. Coach is getting them valuable playing time. But they do have a lot of role models to look up to with the senior class they have. The seniors you and I were able to speak with earlier this week. 17 scholar athletes on the team. 17 of them qualified for the league scholar athlete award. Third down and four. Martin breaks a tackle. There he may go. have a first down. He does have a first down go. out near the 40-yard line. Patiently waiting for the openings. They came, and that is the first down brought to you by All Seal Home Improvement. Dixie's second first down of the ball game. There's no quit in these Dixie Greyhounds. Keep playing, guys. Keep playing. They have the optimism. They have the enthusiasm. And you wait long enough for those holes to open. That's what Martin did. And he said, hey, I'll take it myself. Get nice. the first down. Thank you very nice much. Blocking their right guard, Spencer Butler. Six foot, 175, sophomore. One of their team leaders. There's that so rocket. From the 39-yard line, a pass out to the left side. That was... And... Oh the pass was complete. Looks like maybe a cramp. You know, good move by both coaches. Go to running clock. You know, that's mutual agreement. That's not a state rule. They decided, let's go running clock here in the second quarter. So it will be second and ten coming up as... Oh boy. He, the good news is he is walking on under his own power. Uh, albeit limping, he's not needing physical assistance to be helped off the field. That's the one thing we have seen the yeah. several Dixie players that have been shaken up. And if the behavior suggests to be it's like a cramp, the good news is cramp is not serious. It is very painful, but it is not serious. Hey, you see a great big guy out there in the Dixie huddle, a big guy on a red uh, sweat. There he is with the headset. The, the headset. Yes. That's Theo Whitaker. He's the athletic director. He's also the defensive coordinator. He played football at the University of Cincinnati. And guess who his position coach was? Mike Tomlin. So quite obviously, hey, Theo is a Steeler fan. He says, I played for Mike Tomlin. AD, assistant football coach, good guy, Theo. New to the Dixie community. Played big-time football, UC. Played for Rick Minter, position coach. Long-time UC coach Rick Minter. Yeah, head coach of the Steelers now. Second down and 10 for the Greyhounds. Martin joined in the backfield by Dalton. Low snap, but he's able to control it. Did well to get by one tackle, but the low snap, and he already found himself behind the eight ball from that point forward. All he could do to avoid an even bigger loss on the play, so it will be third and long coming up. 
You know, the uh, National Trail DBs are doing a pretty big cushion. I look for all hitches for almost from now on. Catch and throw. That time, uh, Aiden Martin didn't have a chance on the, on the low snap. A hey, sophomore's a good one. The center, Spencer Butler, 6'4", 270 sophomore. They're going to build around him. He's the big guy they're going to build around. So third and long for the Greyhounds. Their last third down just a few seconds ago. They were able to convert oh, to a first down, but another low snap here. And Martin will lose a couple play. Helmet come off on the play. Got to come out of the ball game. Our high school rule, helmet comes off, you come out safety precaution. But it will be first down. That was James Baker. Uh, again, uh, he, he does have to leave the field because the helmet came off, even though it was just, it, it happens sometimes. Yep. We look down at Dixie sideline, you see all those guys in jerseys but no pads. Nine players injured. Why does that always happen when you got low roster numbers? So fourth and 15, Jazz Miller brought on to punt. Miller did try a fake punt in the first quarter, but through an interception that National Trail was able to capitalize on. He tries a rugby punt, may have gotten deflected a bit. Taken on a hop, no fumble, it's a live ball. Live ball near the 38-yard line. It may have been recovered by Dixie. It is. So is this the spark that the Greyhounds were missing in the first quarter? They may have just gotten it in the second quarter. A fumbled punt recovery recovered at the 38-yard line. So the drive continues for the Greyhound offense. Hey man, I respect these Dixie Greyhounds. It's hard to go to school and have the students go, what happened to you guys the other night? Just keep coming back and giving it all you got. Look at the effort out here. I think it may have gotten deflected just a tad, the pump by Miller, but then that may have disrupted the vision of the pump returner. Nice. As Martin on the first down. Keeper got a hole, and he may have enough for another first down. Just short, second and inches. So Martin providing the bulk of the Greyhound offense. First time they have gotten past midfield this evening. Defensive coordinator for the Blazers, Frank Carr, up in the press box. 18 years, head coach at Earlham College. Great guy. Oh, my goodness, great guy. Martin alone in the backfield. Pass off the hand of Jacob Bartram. He was the intended receiver, and it falls incomplete. We'll bring up third and short. Some young linebacker for National Trail almost had a pick. Martin had the right idea to catch Bartram, get the short yardage, pick up the first down, then reset. Just maybe got a little too excited. He saw Bartram. Bartram did have a step on the defender, and Martin may have put a little extra energy more than he meant to on that pass. Incomplete pass, but clock is running on the running clock. Third and short. Martin on the keeper. Got He's it. got the first down. He is inside the 25-yard line as Dixie... On the move, trying to get in the end zone. As this first down brought to you by All Seal Home Improvement. Hey, I like that look of Coach Hoffman with his shirt and tie. Professional looking. You know, he's been coaching 40-some years. He's a veteran. He doesn't coach football. He's a coach. And there's a he is difference. A coach. Oh, he is a coach. On first down, Dalton with the carry, and oh he is immediately goodness. met in the backfield by multiple National Trail defenders. So that's going to bring up second and long, and I hope Hunter or Dalton is able to get up okay. That was a hard hit, unfortunately. Uh -oh. You know, if your quarterback is hurt, I think maybe it's time to start saying, do we need to play the second half here? I, I hate to say that. The kids want to play, but, yep. you know, you got to take care of your own kids. In the meantime, let's go down to, uh, to the sideline. Tej Joshi. Hey, guys, i got to say, I'm very impressed by the Dixie fans. The scoreboard, not the most positive thing, but you guys are staying positive here on the sidelines. Tell me how you guys are doing that. I mean, we've had good spirit all year so far. I mean, there's not always a lot to cheer for on the football team, but our other sports, we keep our they help keep our uh, spirit up like you said your fall sports across the board everyone's keeping each other positive do you play another sport how do all the different teams keep each other accountable and cheer for each other i do uh i'm the soccer team captain and the soccer team we always keep it mandatory we go see the volleyball games the volleyball games come support us 
But then we all come together, we come to the football games. We like to just spread the spirit around and help cheer on our teams to victory. Let's talk about everyone here who's behind you right now. Let's talk about how you guys are able to keep so much energy here. Let's talk to me what it feels like, the atmosphere energy here in the bleachers. Oh, when the bleachers are packed, it's got a good atmosphere here, that's for sure. We always, we like to stay positive. And we, just, we like to cheer on our team. Like you heard, they love to cheer on their team. We're sending it back up to you guys up in the broadcast booth. Thank you, Tage. That's Hunter Dalton. Good news, he is up and walking, albeit slowly, but walking back to the sideline. I love what that young man said about supporting each yes. other and coming out. I'm sure the football players go to soccer games. And that's what you like. The school spirit, high school spirit. Here's empty. He'll have a pattern called one way and a rocket or bubble called the other way. It is awesome. No to blitz. See. I think he's going to stay with the pattern. It is awesome to see yep. multiple Staying student athletes pattern. supporting each other. As Martin on the keeper got past two defenders, not past the third and the fourth. He will be stopped just a little bit short after a short gain. It will bring up third and long. Now listen, they got a kicker, Chaz Miller. He's second team all conference last year. He's a scholar athlete. He's president of student council. He's a soccer player. He's got a leg now. 4.37 student, number three in the class. They get anywhere near there. We're going to see a field goal attempt. They are definitely in range. They're at yeah. the 22 right now. So one. looking about a 39 yarder if they do not get any There's more yards on this formation. play. Martin looking to his left, forced to roll left. Has some time, tries a pop pass, but Zach Wright was the intended receiver. He was not quite anticipating that pass. So now fourth down. If they try the field goal, it will be a 39-40 yard attempt. Field goal. And hey, here comes Chaz make Miller. Make this, Chaz. Make this. Timeout. We got to set it up. And we will take a break with that as when we come back, fourth down. You're watching Thursday Night Lights on my TV day. 49-0 the current score, but Chas Miller is on to attempt a 39-yard field goal for the Dixie Greyhounds. Snap down, hold down, kick is up, kick is on the way. It is short. Oh, just short. It was on target, but couldn't quite clear the crossbar. So the snap attempt is from a little, 39. Snap is a little high. Bengals can identify with that. Oh, my goodness. A little high snap, a little bit of pressure. Where the lace is out. Yeah. Running clock. So National Trail will take over after holding the Dixie Greyhounds to a scoreless drive. As here's a other angle of the kick. Not far Ooh. at all. Very close from 38. It dead probably yeah, dead down the middle. 38 yards. It probably would have been enough to at least clip the crossbar, go over. But from 39, it just missed the crossbar. Second 0, 2 0. So the Blazers with the ball in a 49 to 0 lead. Wing T. Bergen Hoffman no longer in a quarterback. It is number. 10, Jamison Watts, have they shifted him into the quarterback role? He does have a touchdown yep. run. All new, all, all number two, 2-0. Two Coach Hoffman's doing the right thing. You know, Coach Hoffman is going to hold us down, and someday Coach Wolf will be on the, this side. And remember, hey, the, the veteran coach, Coach Hoffman, he held it down on me. He could, this, this could have been 200, Matt, 150 for sure. And uh, it's not going to be because Coach Hoffman's a class guy. Coach Wolf will remember that. Coach Wolf, someday you'll be on the end of the, the, the other side because you're a good young coach. You know, it, 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 what goes around comes around. You'll be fine, Coach Wolf. So after consultation with the referees, that is the end of the first half officially. A very efficient first 24 minutes for the National Trail Blazers as they are out to a 49-0 lead against the Dixie Greyhounds. So we will shortly be hearing from Tej Joshi in just a short minute. In the meantime, your thoughts overall, Coach, on the first half. Uh, very very efficient for the National Trail offense. There's a reason they've won three straight. Well, just what we expected. It was David against Goliath. You know, I, I don't think anyone in their most crazy dreams thought that, that Dixie was, was not only going to win this game, but put up a good game. Uh, yep. So right now let's go down to Tej Joshi with National Trail head coach Mark Hoffman. Tej? 
Let's talk about that half. Obviously, the scoreboard looks great for you guys. How do you keep everything rolling into the second half? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're, we're trying to play all our young guys because we got to prepare for them because they never get a JV play. No team here has a JV, and we're trying to get our young guys in and get them some playing time. Now, our old guys, they all want back in. But you know what? Our young guys have to take top priority this half. Like you said, it's about keeping that balance. Talk a little bit more about the importance for the long run, about getting those reps right now for the years to come. Yeah. Well, you know, you only get better when you play. You only get better when you rep. You only get better when you get in there and actually experience a game. So what we think is this. We not, we not only think we have a pretty good varsity, but we think our young kids are pretty good too. You know, they come to the weight room. They're strong. They do what they're supposed to do. They just don't have any experience yet. And they are getting some playing time in this half. We are just about out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you guys up in the broadcast booth. Thank you, Tage. That was National Trail head coach Mark Hoffman as the Blazers have a 49 to nothing lead at halftime. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Premier Health Thursday Night Lights, presented by your Toyota area dealers. Halftime is sponsored by Wright and Schulte. The score is 49 to nothing here at halftime, and we are talking with the principal over at National Trail. Tell us a little bit about your school overall right now. The fall sports season, how is it going overall? Fall sports season is, you know, right in the middle of everything. It's going pretty well. Um, watching all of our kids kind of out here supporting one another is a big deal for us because we're all about kind of that completing the puzzle thing. So seeing all the kids over there and, and the good sportsmanship they're showing is really nice. Like you said, that sportsmanship certainly is key. Let's talk about the fact that you have so many kids who made it over here as a principal. Are you nervous they're not going to make it to school tomorrow morning? I think they'll be there. Uh, we have a great student body. They support all their uh, fellow classmates, all of our different teams. That goes a lot to our AD as well, who's really helped to organize that. You know, of course, you have so many great athletes over at National Trail, but also a lot of great athletes who are really good at school, too. Talk to me about the importance that you guys place on that over at National Trail. Well, you know, it's a scholar athlete. We're all about having kids out on the, the field of competition, but we want them to be really strong in the classroom, too. So we encourage them to do their work, hit the books, get the help they need, and make sure that they're excelling in all ways, not just on the field, but also in academics. Maybe you can give us in practice, what are some ways you're able to maintain that strong level of academic practice? I think the way we maintain that is by having high expectations of our students and also encouraging them. We give them props when they do good things. We recognize all of those academic honors, those athletic honors, and the other extracurriculars too. So by acknowledging that they're doing great things, they want to keep doing more great things. For anybody watching right now who may not know what your school is all about when it comes to spirit or anything in that regard, what's one thing you want to tell our audience right now? I guess the biggest thing is what we always say there is it's better to be a blazer, and I think our students understand that's why we have so much spirit. Great talking to you, Principal. Really appreciate it. We're going to head to a quick commercial break. More interviews to come. Halftime here, the score is 49 to nothing. We are chatting with the new Lebanon School Superintendent. Great to be chatting with you here today. Also, of course, we got team manager Charles with us as well. We're going to get to him in a second. Let's just start with you, though, first. All right. You got a great turnout. The young kids, the middle aged kids, the high school kids, all here in the, in the stands. Why is that a big deal? The, the school year has really ha started out with a lot of excitement and enthusiasm. And, you know, though we have a, a young and experienced team that's been a little injured, that enthusiasm from our student body has been right with them, supporting them every step of the way. Let's talk about the fall sports at large, not just football. I, know I was chatting with some of your kids, and they were pumped for volleyball and soccer and everything. Let's talk about that enthusiasm overall. Absolutely right. Our, our boys' soccer team is doing incredibly well. Uh, had a lot of big victories. Our uh, girls' volleyball team has had some big victories as well, and so they're in the top half of, uh, their, of the WOAC there. You know, I was chatting with a bunch of the folks here in the stands, and they all told me, hey, one thing we got to cheer for tonight is definitely our friend Charles right here. For those who don't know who Charles is, maybe you can tell us a little bit about him. Charles has been a team manager for many sports for more years than I've been superintendent, and he is a Dixie guy through and through and supports those teams no matter what. Charles, really quick, tell me, why do you love Dixie? Huh? Why do you love Dixie? I'm like Dixie. 
I'm a kitchen Dutch. I'm a kitchen. Everybody at home, just keep an eye on Charles. The fans go crazy for him. They love him. He's a true member of the member of the community. Here you heard it. He absolutely nobody loves Dixie more. Uh, last question I have for you: What can you encourage some of any of you one part of your community is watching at home right now to stay involved and engaged with the entire school system here? Well, throughout the school year, we have a number of activities that are open to the public and really showcase the, all the skills and talents of our kids. We invite everybody to be there and uh, get involved in schools whenever they can. It was great chatting with both of you. Absolutely love it. We are now going to check in with one of our sponsors, Michael Wright, with the law firm of Wright & Schulte. <laughs> I'm attorney Michael Wright. I'm proud to be a sponsor of Thursday Night Lights again this year. I'm happy to take part in such a great community event. It is an honor to support this sponsorship bringing families, communities, and people together to celebrate the sportsmanship of all athletes. Let's all celebrate together and remember, if you've been injured in an accident, make the right choice. Halftime here scores 49 to nothing. We are now joined by the director over at National Trail, Troy Ferguson. Great to be chatting with you. Of course, your team's having a great turnout tonight on the scoreboard, but it's not just about the score. It's about all the fans and all the people in your community. Do you have any thoughts to share on that? You know, obviously, uh, we're having a, a good year in football, um, and our community is going to come out and support that, and our students are great. Um, you know, We call them the bleacher creatures, and, and they do a great job of, of coming out and supporting our kids, and it's awesome. Tell us more about these bleacher creatures. Is there anything unique or special or recurring that they do in the stands that's a great, I don't know, thing that you guys like to celebrate? Um, nothing's really specific they just like to come out and support our teams and and uh, make sure that our kids on the field know that they're they've got their support in their back and it's just fun it's fun for our kids and both on the field and in the stands obviously as you said the football team is having a pretty good season let's talk about any other fall sports you want to highlight it's not just about football there's so many great athletes that you guys have let's hear about those other school uh, other sports as well uh, yeah our volleyball team is off to a good start uh started the season five and five and two and and got things rolling and our boys golf team uh really going to give a shout out to them they're off to a great start uh i guess almost to the end of their season but uh getting ready for the postseason and, and having a great year so let's talk about the cheer team the band everyone else who makes this a great spectacle anything positive you want to say about them uh, i mean they're all awesome we can't you know we can't have all this you know going on behind us now without them and our cheerleaders our band they're they do a great job and, and really getting our teams fired up and, and it's great you know, I was asking your principal about this. I want to get your thoughts on it as well. Academics play a huge role in athletics. Anything you want to say that highlights that fact? I know, you know, as good as a football team is doing, they, you know, they're doing even better in the classroom. Uh, and all of our student athletes, we make sure they know their students first, and, and you know, they they do a great job of making sure they uphold that that student part of it. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. We are now going to check in with our scholar athlete presentation. From Dixie, Chaz Miller. Chaz is the kicker for the Greyhound football team and is also a member of the soccer and track and field teams. He was named to the second team all-conference football team and was a regional placer in the 100-meter hurdles in track. Chaz is a two-year captain of the soccer team. He has a 4.37 GPA and is ranked sixth in his class. Chaz is the student council president and is mentoring a foreign exchange student this year. The Jeff Schmidt Auto Group is proud to sponsor the Scholar Athlete Award, featured on Thursday Night Lights. We are honored to recognize these scholar athletes from all over the Miami Valley for their outstanding academic and athletic achievements. Halftime here at Thursday Night Lights, we are joined by a very important man over at Dixie. He is the Dean of Students. 
He is, I mean, the athletic director. He is a coach on the football team. Theo, great to be chatting with you. Let's talk a little bit about your role at the school here. I just mentioned some of the titles. Maybe you can explain what exactly those mean. So as uh, Adidas students, I basically deal with discipline, minor discipline and stuff like that. So talk to kids if they're having issues in the classroom. Teachers send kids to me, things like that. Um, as athletic director, I just run all the events, make sure all the events go off smooth, uh, schedule everything, get workers for all the events. And then as a coach, uh, trying to coach, no scoreboard doesn't reflect that tonight, but try to coach and help out football team, help out Coach Wolf, help the guys try to learn and things like that. A true community leader, a community member here at the school. And like you said, the you know, scoreboard is not ideal tonight, but you still need to find places to coach these kids, help these kids, and give them a positive attitude. I heard you guys doing that in the sideline. Right. Maybe you can give us some more details into how you're doing that. So as a, we got a lot of young guys. We've had, we only had three seniors to start with, right? So, excuse me, we had three seasons that aren't playing right now. We have two more. Um, so it makes it tough anyway when you're playing a bunch of 17, 18-year-old guys. You know, we have a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores, a few juniors. So um, I don't want to say it's rebuilding, but we're just trying to get things going back to where they have been. We graduated 11 seniors and all that stuff. So um, those guys know a lot of things. So we're trying to coach the game up and all that stuff as we go along. Lots of great stuff happening here. Last thing I'll ask you is about the fan base here. You're the athletic director as well. Mm -hmm. you got a lot of kids from the you know, 5-year-olds to the 17, 18-year-olds here in the stands. Why is it a big deal for this community? I, I tell you, that's the one thing I love about this community. It's like it doesn't matter how good the team is doing. They're always going to be support, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, kids always come out. You got kids buying pre-sale tickets, parents sending the money to school with your kids. When we have tailgates going on each week, there's something always going on. We have Wee Hounds Night. Like, so there's a lot of things that we're going to have soccer, youth night here coming up. So our community supports each other very well. Um, also, they know the time that the kids put into things. So they want to come out. They want to support them. It wins, wins and losses don't matter here, right? Like, they, they, they want to support the kids no matter what's going on. Coach, thank you so much for all that. I mean, we're seeing you doing some coaching and helping out the community right now, live on our camera. That concludes our halftime presentation. Second half's coming up after this. Halftime has been sponsored by Wright and Schulte. Welcome back to Premier Health Thursday Night Lights, presented by your Cincinnati area Toyota dealers. We are live from New Lebanon, where National Trail has a 49 to nothing lead against Dixie. The Greyhounds kicking off this opening kickoff for the second half, brought to you by Wright and Schulte. Matt Digby, Jim Plaish, Taze Joshi, and our crew as they tried a sideways Ooh. onside kick. Very nearly worked, but it does go out Ooh, of bounds. Oh, I liked it. That was, that was a bold decision, and it very nearly <laughs> paid off in the Greyhounds' favor. 49-0, we're going onside kick. Hey, that shows some spirit. That shows some gump. I like it, Coach Wolf. Thanks, Hall of Famer. The Hall of so Famer, Bob first and ten. So first attempt for National Trail, who has a seven-touchdown lead, all courtesy of touchdowns coming on the ground. Two from Caden Clark, two from Drew DeWitt, and one each from Chase Rubush. Jameson Watts and Jody Wintrow. Here's a shot of Coach Hoffman. You know, he's the strength coach. Everywhere he's been in his 47 year career, he's always been the strength coach. Look at him. He looks like he's like living in the weight room. He's got a strong team. A strength coach is essential to a good football program. Coach Huffman's his own strength coach. Everywhere he's been, he's been the strength guy. And we mentioned National Trail without going with their second team offense. This is Cooper Smith under center at quarterback instead of Bergen Hoffman. And a handoff up the middle. One broken tackle, two broken tackles. No, not quite. That was Zach Krieger who was nearly gone to the house for 65 yards, but a great tackle to make the stop just past midfield. And that's another RB's first down for the Blazer offense. That wing tee. Krieger broken one tackle right there. Dalton had a shot, and that was an important intervention there by Zach Wright. Otherwise, that's a 65-yard touchdown run for the sophomore. Yes, the sophomore running back, Zach Krieger. There's that wing T formation, a fullback, a halfback, and a wing back. A lot of crisscross action. Watch the crisscross stuff. There it is, crisscross. And the quarterback a, turns his back to the ball. Early a lot movement, of crisscross. Early movement from someone. You know, at halftime, Coach Hoff said, you know, we were going to play the young players, and that's our game plan. He talked. But you know what he did say? He said, I got sympathy for the guy on the other sideline. You know, we got a mismatch. You know, 
every coach through his career has been on both sides of these kind of games. If you stick around long enough, you'll be on the winning side, you'll be on the losing side. What he didn't say is, I'm one of the good guys. He said, I'm going to do everything I can. Coach Wolf's a young coach. I respect him. I'm going to try to hold the score down. And here is another handoff up the middle. That's Jody Windrow. He has one touchdown already, and he is close to another first down. Yes, he has a first down. Brought to you by Arby's just outside the red zone. Wintro has the most recent touchdown. It came late in the second quarter. And again, we were talking about it, Dixie. They are keeping positive attitudes. They are looking for those yeah. little victories. They had a great drive going. It ended in a field goal attempt from Chas Miller, our scholar athlete of the week. That was just short from 39 yards. 38, 37, it would have been good. You're still looking at a huge mismatch there. National Trail's number twos are bigger than Dixie's number ones. So here's a Chris first cross. down handoff to Jamison Watts. Broken one tackle, not the second, but he does get in to the Donato's delivery zone, picking up another Arby's first down. Again, National Trail, this is their first drive of the second half. I guess, again, they enter the Donato's delivery zone. Donato's Pizza, a great call for after the game. Order online for pickup or delivery at Donato's.com. Every piece is important. National Trail kicked off to start the game, so this is... They're, they were first to receive the ball in the second half. They are at the 12-yard line, first and 10. This is Cooper Smith under center. Nice A handoff play. up the middle, and the Dixie defense was there to make the stop for very short, if any, gain. Looks like about two yards, second and eight coming up. That's Hunter Dalton, future Marine. He's, he's fighting. He's, he's defending he's well and playing well for his school. And he's, school back, and he's back on the field because he did have to come off for a bit in the second quarter with an injury, but it's great to see him back out on the field. That's good. Let's hope Dixie gets some of those nine injured players back. Yes. See them all down there on the sidelines. Their hearts are breaking. Coach Wolf was confident that a, a significant number of them would be available for next week's contest. As here's a handoff. This is Wintro. Got a couple of blockers to the end zone. Yes, touchdown, National Trail. Second rush touchdown of the night for Jody Wintro. And that touchdown brought to you by Donato's. So two touchdowns each for Caden Clark, for Drew DeWitt, and now for Jody Wintro. Also add Chase Rubush and Jameson Watts to the scoring tally. As here's Drew DeWitt, who has kicked all eight, or all seven extra points so far. This will be attempt number eight. In addition to his two touchdowns scored on the ground. Kick is up, and it is good. 56 to nothing is the score. As National Trail... They enter tonight winning three straight. They are well on their way to a fourth straight win. 56 0 your score. You're watching Thursday Night Lights on my TV date. Fifty-six nothing the score as National Trail has been very effective on both sides of the ball. As they are going for their fourth straight win. Dixie. Looking for their first win of the year. This kickoff brought to you by Wright and Schulte. It is Drew DeWitt lined up to take the kick. Two men back for the Greyhounds, Roman Sarver and Zach Wright. Wright has had a couple of solid returns on kickoffs, but this is going to be Sarver. Bobbled the ball close to the 10-yard line. He does have time to pick it up. But he's not able to get much more yardage after that. It will be first down for the Greyhound offense, but deep in their own territory. Hey, that's Frank Carr, former head coach at Earlham College. He's 18 years the head coach, and he was athletic director for 10 years. He's coaching high school football now, defensive corner. He says, Coach, I love coaching football. A minute, he was a fundraiser for four years. You know, Earlham College, I don't know if people know much about it, known as a liberal college. So not a whole lot of football players were really attracted to it. But you talk about going out and beating the recruiting trail, and I sent them three or four players, and it was a perfect fit for them. They loved Earlham College. They loved Coach. 
Great coach. I'm glad to see he's still helping young people. Let's see the scoring summary brought coach to you by Carr. Grand Associates. Jody Wittrow with the 10-yard run for the most recent touchdown. His second and National Trail's eighth. As Hunter Dalton with a carry up the middle for a very small gain. It will bring up second and long. Hey, Matt, I think we're reaching a point. I'd like to tell the story about some of my coaching experiences but where, where I perceive the score being run up or lopsided games. After this play, I want to tell you one specific story. Well, for Dixie, it's been about the little victory so far. Yes, it they, has. they have had a couple of them. They, they've hard. gotten first downs. They've moved past midfield. As here's Martin, will hand off to Hunter Dalton, but he's immediately met in the oh, backfield by slow. multiple National Trail defenders. So that's going to bring up third and long. But again, we did see Dalton a little shaken up on a play back in the second quarter. He was, is able to return, and he's playing right now. So that is good to see that he's able to shake off those injuries. Yes, it is. These young men are giving all. You know what? It's easy to be given all when you're on top, and everybody's patting you on the back. But how about when you're down 56 to nothing, still come out and play hard? Got another game next week. They'll play hard again. Take the weekend off. Regroup. Rest a little bit. As Martin on third and very long rolls out, screen pass is complete, but no gain. That was Jake Bar Jacob Bartram on the reception. Now, let me tell you one of those stories. I'm the head football coach at Withrow High School. I won't tell you the other school. We're playing for the city championship, packed crowd and everything. We're down one point, fourth mm -hmm. quarter. We got the ball on our own four-yard line with 15 seconds to go. So may as well go for it. What do I got to lose? 15 right. seconds. We can make it. We didn't make it. Yeah, so the other team got the ball on about the four-yard line with maybe three seconds to go. Could have taken a knee. We're out of play, scored a touchdown. Oh, that's okay. Went for two, and he had a kicker. Oh, well, here's the worst part. Game's over. Go out, shake the coach's hand. He says, I'm going to tell you after this kick what the, the other coach said to me. It's a oh, chance. Miller, a high snap, goes out back in the end zone, so that is a safety. Miller was halfway back in the end zone, so had very little room for error if the snap went wayward, but ultimately it did. So National Trail will increase the lead to 58-0, and they'll be getting the ball when we return from this quick break. You're watching Premier Health Thursday Night Lights on my TV date. The National Trail High School located roughly a half hour or so from Dixie High School, so a fairly long... Uh, relatively long drive but the fans from national trail have made their presence known here in new lebanon and they are certainly enjoying the outcome of this contest 58 nothing as we are midway through the third quarter this kickoff brought to you by wright and schulte as the blazers getting the ball back following a safety this is Caden Clark finding an open hole and has no man to beat. I'm not sure he even got had contact on him. And he will take the kickoff in for a touchdown. Brought to you by Donato's. And that is the third touchdown individually for Caden Clark. He was able to take the kickoff on a couple hops. Found spaces where there were spaces. and He's a speedster. He is. Hey, it, let me finish that story. So... He goes for two, you know, I, I tell myself, well, you know, he probably should take a knee, but I got to set an example for my team. That I gotta go to shake his hand. He says, Coach Blake's got to talk to you. Yeah, he says, I'm trying to leave the school. Can I use you as a reference for my next job that I want to get? Oh, man, I don't, I don't know. You're pushing things a little bit there, my friend. So all kind of things about running scores up. So 64 nothing is the score as DeWitt attempts the extra point. It will be his ninth attempt of the night. It is up and it is good. Nine touchdowns and a safety for the Blazers. That is how they have reached 65 points. Just over five minutes to play in the third. Here's a replay of that touchdown run. Taken on a bounce by Clark. Got several great blocks and was able to stay on that far sideline. Have several blockers just in case. But Clark now with his third touchdown individually. Drew DeWitt and Jody Wintrow have two each. And Chase Rubush and Jameson Watts each have one. Matt, you mentioned National Trail being a half hour from here. I always wondered about National Trail High School. So if you're driving on 70 West, right I mean, right before you hit the Indiana State Line, look over to your right. Exactly. That's National Trail High School. I never knew that. And, of course, you know where the name came from. So it's actually, it's, you, know, you can see it. It sits right on Route 40. Yes. Before 70 was put in. Route 40 was called the National Road or the National Trail. Yes. And that's why we got the name National Trail High School. So National Trail High School, of course, you 
go a couple miles east on 70, you will pass Springfield. There's a golf course, the National Golf Links. You yeah. have the National Road Golf Course. Sure. Not far from West Jefferson. You keep going east closer to Columbus. So a lot of ties to the National, National Trail, yep. US 40. Yep. Reminds me of I, I used to work in West Virginia. We had Route 60 was known as the Midland Trail. Oh, yeah. So Drew DeWitt back to kickoff. It's presented by Wright and Schulte. Two men back for the Greyhounds. This will be Roman Sarver from about the 15. Gets up to the 20, and that's where the Dixie Greyhound offense will take over. Again, we've said it multiple times throughout this game, Coach. It's been little victories, and there have been little victories for the Greyhound offense. They did have one great drive. Able to pick up a couple first downs, get past midfield, and give Chas Miller a chance at a 39-yard field goal that was on target, ultimately just a little bit short. But it's, again, the optimism of the players, the confidence they have in the first-year head coach, Eric Wolf. Even if it's not necessarily the best of results right now, they are seeing, they are aware there is a light at the end of the tunnel. They're getting a little beat up now, though. You see him lipping around, and, uh, you know, they're, getting, they're playing both ways. It's a hot night. They're getting a little beat up right now. You, you know, you hate to see that. Now, apparently a ruling on the fumble, so discussion right now. Is that a first down just outside the red zone then for the National Trail Blazers? Let's take a look at this replay. This was Zach Wright on the play. He's hit. It's out. Hey, Matt, there's an interesting story behind National Trail having the color orange. There were, in 1967, when they formed National Trail High School, there were three high schools they consolidated mm -hmm. into one. But they said, we're not taking the school colors from any of the other ones. Okay. Red, blue, gold, black, so on and so on and so on. They said, well, what's left? They said, orange. Well, and the people in the communities up there said, that's fine. We're all Cleveland Brown. There were no Bengals back in those days. Fair. We're all Bengals fans, a little bit of Bowling Green kind of look. That's why they're orange, because all the other choices were gone. Now, the million-dollar question at this point, do they consider putting any special figure painting a logo with their midfield like the Cleveland Browns just did with Brownie the Elf at the middle of their field? Well, you never know. It would be neat to put a blazer out there. Never say never. Yeah. If something else happened, Coach Huffman was a student then. They brought all the students into the gym and said, listen, here's five fight songs. Vote on it. And that's how they picked their fight song. In 1967, the students voted on it. So there's Coach Wolf. Hang Eric. in there, Coach. Hang in there. First-year head coach Eric Wolf. It has not been the easiest of first years. But he's keeping a positive attitude. The players are keeping a positive attitude. Again, a lot of returning players, a lot of non-seniors on this Dixie squad that will definitely take learning lessons from this. It was a fumble recovered by National Trail on that kickoff. Here's a handoff to Zach Krieger. One broken tackle, two broken tackles inside the 10, and he is forced out inside the 5. Not before, though, he picks up a first down brought to you by Arby's, and he has also entered the Donato's delivery zone. Donato's a great call for after the game. Order online for pickup or delivery at donato's.com. Every piece is important. So Krieger has gotten a lot of playing time in the second half, and he has made the most of it. A sophomore running back, as we, we mentioned, Coach Hoffman putting the second team in. Under three minutes to go in the third quarter on a running clock, 65 nothing the score. Cooper Smith remains at quarterback. He is also a sophomore. So we have several seniors that we saw in the first half. Bergen Hoffman, Caden Clark. Drew DeWitt is only a junior. Drew DeWitt will be back next year. But we're also seeing potentially next year's quarterback, Cooper Smith, and a future RB1 for the Blazer offense and sophomore Zach Krieger. Tate Kreitzer was on the stop for that play for a small gain, so brings up second and goal. Strong junior class. Coach Hoff feels good about it. Hey, Coach House has five children. He and Kim, Rachel, Matt, Eric, JJ, and Elise. Five children for Coach Hoff and Kim. Remember Kim gave him the thumbs up to come back and coach. 
Clock now under two minutes in third quarter. As National Trail looking for their 10th touchdown of the night. Very efficient on offense. Smith on the keeper. And again, he is stopped by the Dixie defense. So it's going to bring up third and goal. Not very many times we've seen National Trail in third down situations tonight. This may be one of the first. I'm going to give you a prediction. Quarterback sneak. Coach Hoff is doing what he can to hold the score down, you know. There's his son. That's, that's Eric Hoffman. Uh, Coach Hoff and Coach Carr, they're saying, we're trying to train young coaches to take over when we leave. You know, both of them are up in their 60s, and uh, Eric is, is, is one of the heir uh, parents to be the head coach. There's a bunch of young coaches on the staff. But Coach Hoff and Coach Carr trying to develop all their young coaches to make sure the continuity when they say side, it's time for them to uh, hang out up the cleats, hang up the whistle. Final minute of the third quarter now as Smith took a loss on that QB rush. So it's third from about the five. Smith again, and he's going to be stopped. Jacob Bartram not fooled by any potential trickery, and he was in perfect position to make the stop. Or, excuse me, that was number 89. Bartram wears 88. So that brings up fourth down for the Blazers. Billy Bowser on the stop for the Dixie Greyhound defense. Quarter. And that will be, indeed, be, they will let the clock wind down to the end of the third quarter. So 16 points in the third quarter for the National Trail Blazers. Two touchdowns and a team safety. As our coverage continues, this is Premier Health, Premier Health Thursday Night Lights, presented by your Cincinnati area Toyota dealers. National Trail on their way to a fourth straight win in New Lebanon. And this is a look at the Thursday Night Lights Champions Trophy donated by Rand Associates. The first four games of Thursday Night Lights 2022, the trophy going to the home team. But officially, it is six minutes until National Trail becomes the first team to win a game in Thursday Night Lights as the road team has a fumble on the play on fourth down. It's recovered by the Dixie Greyhounds. Hey, look at small victories. They're down 65 points. They're jumping and screaming and happy. They had a red zone stand. Take Kreitzer. Hey, Coach Hoff, good job on those Florida quarterback sneaks. He's doing what he can. You know, you know, Matt, in my coaching career, I experienced this three or four head coaches that absolutely ran the score up every time they could. But they would tell you, look, that's not my job to hold the score down. It's your job to get better. I didn't mind those guys because they were, they were up front about it. You knew going into the game, listen, there's not going to be any mercy here. Well, it was sort of rubbed me the wrong way, and I'll talk about that after this play because we want to see what the Dixie Greyhounds are going to do. So the Greyhounds will start from their own five-yard line. By the way, they made a ruling at the end of the third quarter that the fourth quarter was only going to be six minutes with a running clock as Good Martin move. up the middle gained a couple yards. The ball did come out, but not before Martin was ruled down. So it's going to be second and about four. Mutual consent, both head coaches. But what I was saying, some of the coaches that rubbed me wrong were coaches that run the score up and say, well, coach, you know, I, I wanted my players to make all league. Or, coach, I had a record that I wanted one of my players to make. Or, coach, I got this great senior class. I really wanted to leave them on the field. Hey, if you ran the score up on me, just shake my hand and say, you know, I ran the score up on you. Get better. Uh, you know, those mean kind of coaches. I didn't like excuses. Uh, you know, you run the score up on me. Now, Coach Hoff's not running the score up. He's doing what he can to hold it down. As here's Martin out to about the 16-yard line. That may be enough for a first down for the Dixie offense. They've had a couple of those. And it is a first down brought to you by All Seal Home Improvement. And Martin has been at the center of a lot of those first down pickups. The Only a freshman quarterback. We mentioned and we spoke with Athletic Director Troy Whitaker. Tage did that halftime. Not a lot of seniors on this Dixie roster. They're placing faith in their first-year head coach, Eric Wolf. And again, it's all about the little victories. Yes. This is Hunter Dalton. He's a junior. He will hopefully be back next year. He gets oh, he'll be back. a small gain on the play. Phoenix Lewis on the stop. We had a chance to speak with him yesterday. Must be a game warden. Three-year starter. Plays the guitar, Phoenix Lewis. As Dixie looking for a positive end to this game on offense as a pitch nearly picked off in the backfield, but Dalton got it, and he is down, he was down before the ball came out. No, no fumble there. It is a small gain, about two, so it will be second and eight, but Dalton was down. 
brought down by number 53, Bryce Thompson. Third down, they have. So third, third down, excuse me, is the uh, play up coming right now for Dixie. As again, we are just over three minutes to go in the game. This fourth quarter shortened to six minutes. It was ruled at the end of the third quarter. Martin in the backfield. And now the ball is out. No question this time. And recovered by the National Trail Blazer defense. They've had several takeaways, either through fumbles and one pick. But that was... A recovery on the part of Zach Lawson. So National Trail takes over, and they will be back on offense after this break. You're watching Thursday Night Lights on my TV date. 2.44 to go in regulation time on Thursday Night Lights. National Trail with the ball and a 65-0 lead just outside the 20-yard line as Cooper Smith hands off to Jody Wintrow. He has two touchdowns tonight. Trying to tie Caden Clark with a third touchdown on the evening. We have received word this is not the only high school game in the Miami Valley tonight. We have received a final score. Ponets winning 37-34 against Thurgood Marshall. We will be seeing Ponets in our Thursday Night Lights season finale, Week 10, when they take on Meadowdale at Welcome Stadium. Coach Daryl Wilson's doing a good job with the Golden Panthers opponents and Big Sheps at Meadowdale. Everybody in town knows Big Shep. Who we got next week, Matt? We will be in Stebbins uh, up at Riverside. Butler taking on Stebbins. I know those two teams have critical MVL matchups. Tomorrow night, Butler is home against West Carrollton, and Stebbins will be on the road at Tippecanoe. Like tonight, you can see to next week's game, Butler at Stebbins on My TV Dayton, over the air channel 22.3, Spectrum channel 24. We'll also have that streaming online at Dayton247now.com and on the Dayton 247 Now Facebook page. Butler Aviators and the Stebbins Indians. That is our week six Thursday Night Lights matchup. As second down, Zach Krieger, broken one tackle, and he finds a hole on the left side, and he is in for a touchdown. His first score of the night, and that increases the lead to 71-0 on the touchdown by Zach Krieger. Touchdown brought to you by Donato's Pizza. Hey, did you say Butler next week? Butler at Stevens. Hey, a third man in the booth says Cooper. He's got a big smile over. He's Butler Aviator. He goes back. He plays in the alumni band every year. You know what? He's not going to be impartial next week. As Stevens Indians, Seth, he's going to be all rooting for his Butler Aviators next week. You fired up, Seth? Oh, he, oh, he's pumping now, his fist. He's I all say, fired up. Butler is the road team, so yeah. how do you balance that? Because we are going into Stebbins' oh, home, home stadium. The tribe, you know, great pride there, Stebbins Indians. Got a good one next week. That will be in two, two, two teams Miami. are fighting for third, fourth, fifth place in the league. That would be a good game. That is a Miami Valley League matchup. Right now we are in the WOAC. We have another WOAC matchup coming up in two weeks' time when Tri-County North goes to Preble Shawnee. Tri-County North coming off a big win last week against the Dixie Greyhounds. As the clock continues the to call. run, and I believe they have called the game officially. So National Trail comes on the road. A couple of the players we spoke with yesterday said they were treating it as a business trip. And they certainly did just that from the opening kickoff of the game. It was a very successful night for Coach Mark Hoffman and the Blazer offense and defense as they win 71 to nothing is your final score. National Trail, the first road team to win on Thursday Night Lights in 2022. A key win for them, their fourth straight of the season. We'll be back with the trophy presentation after a quick break. This is Premier Health TNL, presented by Cincinnati Area Toyota Dealers. 71 to nothing, the final score. National Trail wins their fourth straight game on the road at Dixie. And let's go down to midfield right now. Tace Joshi is with Mark Hoffman and the Blazers. Coach, 71 points is an insane amount of points. Let's talk about your team and how you guys feel after a big win like that. Well, I'll tell you what, we always like to win. There's nothing we don't like any better. But, you know, and we got plenty of time to play our young kids. Everybody played well. We got in there and we did what we had to do. The thing of it is, is when you're in a game like this, the other team has to stop you. And if they can't stop you, you know, it's just, it's tough. It's tough all night. 
a lot of people scored. A lot of people had great plays tonight. Yeah. Is there any player or position group or anybody that you want to give a special shout out to? See these guys standing right here, these seniors? All your they, seniors. They've all played their dues, paid their dues. They've all been a great team. They are leaders. They know what's going on. They don't miss the weight room. They don't miss nothing. When I go down and I start attendance, every single one of them are here every single day. And they're leading the juniors. The juniors are a great group. The sophomores are coming on. And the freshmen are pretty good. So I, I, I'm happy with all of them. Coach, it's time for us to give you, your seniors, your juniors, everybody on the team, the whole team, the Premier Health Thursday Night Lights Champions Trophy. Coach, here we go for you and your whole team. Thanks a lot. Here we go. <laughs> lots of points tonight and lots of celebrations tonight. Back to you guys up in the broadcast booth. All right, thank you, Tasha. As we just mentioned, National Trail 71 to nothing winners against the Dixie Greyhounds. National Trail, the first visiting team to win on Thursday Night Lights in 2022. We're going to take a look at several superlatives of the game, starting with the drive of the game, brought to you by Carol Wirtz Tire, Tire Company. And we'll take a look at this first drive. Caden Clark, the opening touchdown, that set the tone for the great, for the Blazers, excuse me, as they had their very successful win. We have our play of the game. This was a long touchdown run on the part of Drew DeWitt. He is our player of the game, presented by Carol Wirtz Tire Company. Drew DeWitt had multiple touchdowns in the first half, and he kicked all the extra points as well. And a good sportsmanship there. Our play of the game brought to you by Wright and Schulte. A long touchdown run, the second of those by Drew DeWitt. As again, he had a very strong performance, the junior, and had great support from the seniors as well, especially Caden Clark. Several touchdowns, including one on the punt return. But Drew DeWitt is our player of the game, and he also has the play of the game. So National Trail moves to 4-1 and one on the season. That will do it for our Week 5 presentation of Thursday Night Lights. We will see you back on air next Thursday when Butler visits Stebbins. In the meantime, we thank you for joining us. This is a presentation of Dayton 24-7 Now and Classic Productions. Our thanks to Jacob Burry, the producer, and the outstanding crew. Now for Seth Cooper, Taze Joshi, and Jim Place. I'm Matt Digby signing off once again tonight's final score. National Trail 71. Dixie's no score. Again, we will see you next week for Butler at Stebbins. Until then, you've been watching Thursday Night Lights, presented by Toyota Area Cincinnati Dealers.